The International Monetary Fund was established in 1944 to carry out its mission of promoting prosperity and peace through economic stability. But the global crisis has put the IMF back into the limelight. Never before has there been such a great demand for IMF loans and to understand what the IMF does and why. Basically, the IMF has three main functions. It provides regular economic health checks for member countries, sort of like a doctor. This is called surveillance. It also provides technical assistance and training, like a coach, and it lends to member countries in times of trouble, like a firefighter. In this video, we'll examine the IMF's role as a lender to countries in crisis. When countries face economic crises or want to prevent them, they can turn to the IMF for advice and loans to help put out their fire and restore stability. But how do crises happen, you may ask? Well, ideally, a country should take in around the same amount of money that it pays out and also have a safe level of reserves. But sometimes, countries, like people, run short of money. This could be caused by internal or external problems and could lead to a crisis. For example, crises can occur if a country has a weak financial system or if it keeps buying more goods and services from other countries than it's selling. A crisis can also occur if an economy is not growing fast enough to keep up with mounting debts. This can lead to a loss of confidence and foreign investors suddenly taking their money elsewhere. Crises can also take root when a country spends money wastefully. For example, by employing more people than it needs, or by handing out subsidies to people who don't need them, or because its tax revenues are insufficient or falling. It can also happen when the price of one of its important exports, like oil, drops. A chronic imbalance in a country's private or public finances can cause an accumulation of debt. This can lead to different types of crises. The most common is called a balance of payments crisis, which can cause its reserves to dry up. A balance of payments problem is dangerous because it can lead to pressure on a country's currency. There could be a decline in consumer demand, less investment by firms, higher unemployment, and lower incomes. What usually follows is uncertainty in the financial markets, prices of stocks and bonds go down, and sometimes a country's currency could be sharply devalued. A really severe crisis can lead to a deep recession and debt defaults. And it can spread like wildfire to other countries and pose a danger to the global economy. Crises can be very costly and the IMF can help by providing larger amounts of money to ease the adjustment and help restore confidence. Any member of the IMF, be it rich, middle income or poor, can ring the bell to ask for a loan. These loans come in various shapes and sizes. They're cheaper than other sources and are tailored to specific needs. When a country requests a loan, the IMF works with the country to design a flexible and targeted reform plan to make it easier for the country to engineer its own recovery and address the underlying problems. Often, the road to recovery means tough choices have to be made, but in order for the loan to be effective, countries have to adopt the right policies and correct the problems that caused the crisis in the first place. Once the program is underway, the country can bring spending back in line with its income and be able to repay the loan. This frees up money for other countries in their own hour of need. A loan from the IMF has larger benefits. It encourages other lenders and creditors to provide financing and it sends a positive signal that it's okay to invest in the country. This helps rebuild foreign exchange reserves and boosts confidence in the country's currency and the economy at large. This leads to the question of accountability. Who owns the IMF? Together, the 188 member countries of the IMF do. 
Since its creation, the IMF stood for international economic and financial cooperation between governments and is held accountable to its members through its executive board and through its owners, like you, who are people from governments of virtually every country in the world.